Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Happy Friday. It is May 12th, 2023. So a lot of cool stuff. Uh, definitely a lot of fun. It's beginning to finally be some summer. I am ex looking, ex I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to go see a movie. It's going to be date night tonight. We're going to be doing some uh, some uh, road biking this, uh, this Saturday. And um, if you guys haven't seen, I just did an interview with my good friend Ryan. Uh, his channel is the League of Sales Engineers. Definitely recommend checking that out. We had a great one hour conversation about everything. So sales, personal development, interview prep, interview strategy, a lot of great things that I think you can take away from. I would definitely recommend checking that out. I'll include it in the uh, video link below. Um, check that the thing. thing. I've, I've kind of messaged a few of my students about it to check it out. And all of them have said, you know, great response. And they learned a lot more kind of in-depth knowledge that I, you know, I kind of expand on a few different things. So in today's video, I got inspired this morning. So I had, uh, I did my workout, did my uh, team meeting. We had an interview for one of our roles, uh, kind of a panel interview, which I was on. And nice guy, great guy, nothing wrong with it. But he kind of talked about, number one, he showed up, just not, the presence on the Zoom was not like kind of what I would say, bringing your A game, first off. And the second thing, so that's make, make sure that you're aware of is make sure you're you dress to impress you don't have to overdress and it's good to ask the recruiter beforehand what's the dress code in this environment but you, you always want to overdress and underdress so he didn't look super presentable and then at the same time like his camera was blurry and then i asked him a simple questions on like you know what are some of your your big skill sets that you bring to the table and he said oh computer skills okay Great, can you expand on that? I was, of course, expecting like certain tools or Microsoft, and he's like, oh, gaming. Okay, can you expand on that? Gaming. I'm like, oh, yeah, I play like gaming like five or six hours a night. Okay, um, thank you. Anything else? Oh, I, I do Word documents from some, some time to time. Okay, understood. Moving on. So, nothing wrong. Uh, he was a very nice, nice guy. But a few things that kind of told me is like, <laughs> number one, you have to make sure you're giving relevant information to your employer. Okay, when I ask kind of skill sets, there's a whole host of skill sets, but it has to be relevant to the job. If, I, if he says computer skills, obviously I'm thinking like, oh, if he has Excel skills, if he has Microsoft skills in general, or if he is using certain tools that are apparent to his job, if he has a recruiter job, does he know ATS systems? If he's a salesperson, does he know CRM systems? Um, or automation systems, different tools that are used in kind of your portfolio. Very, very important. And a good key rule is that, you know, make a list of certain tools uh, to be very aware of, and then master two or three per each category. You don't need to master all of them. There, there's tons of tools out there. I get it. Like when it comes to like, say, CRMs, there's like a thousand, there's a thousand CRMs out there. Um, I probably use myself 10 to 12. I think in my career, ATS systems, probably like seven. Um, but guess what? If I was seeking a job, you only really need to master like one or two or three, okay, depending on the level you're going through. So don't worry about that. Anyway, back to the point where he, you want to make sure you're tailoring it to the job. So I thought in this video, we talk about some do nots, the do not list, do not bring up. Number one, negative comments about previous employer, employers or colleagues, okay? It's very easy, like, especially if you're escaping a certain work environment, it's very easy to talk negative about something, right? Uh, but you want to make sure you're, you're, you're not criticizing the person, you're criticizing maybe the behavior or the activity. So what I mean is, if you're in a spot where you're, the, the interview basically asks you, hey, what, um, you know, why are you currently looking in the market? You don't, want to be, you don't want to be like, oh, my boss sucks, the colleagues suck, oh my God more just like, you know, I'm currently in an employment that I'm, I think I'm ready to like outgrow. I'm ready to move on. Uh, I'm going in a certain direction. I don't think the resources at the other role really fit with my needs and where I want to go. So that's why I'm currently in the market and I'm ready for a change. It's kind of all you have to say. You don't need to start bashing the other, the other side. And by the way, you should never do that because it's going to be, it's going to, the employer's always thinking if we bring this person in, is that how they're going to treat us? So the same thing with like, you know, if you're giving a two week notice, 
Two weeks is standard. Ideally, I would honestly give three weeks. Why? And I tell, and, and it's really true. It's like, if, he, if you, if I find a candidate that also is like, hey, when can you start tomorrow? And they're currently employed. That's a big red flag to me because they're probably going to do the same thing to us if we hire them. It's like, hey, if, if they don't like something, are they just going to quit up and quit? Right. Instead of giving us a two weeks notice to make sure we find a replacement, train the replacement, make sure we leave on good terms. So think about those things. OK, don't do negative comments. Number two, salary or benefits experience, uh, expectations. Nothing wrong with basically voicing how much you want, and how much you deserve. Make sure you keep it at the end of the interview, at the end of the interview, not at the beginning. There's a lot of people. If you're going on a, on a call. And, I'm, and like the first question and you try to dominate the interview and by saying like, hey, how much is this? I need to know right now. And if it doesn't fit, you're out. Like that's just a lack of class and and kind of self-awareness. So if you're going to be doing you need to know the salary expectations because you don't want to go through obviously all these interviews and then it's you know not where your expectations. But do a first interview and wait till the end to actually that's the appropriate time to ask. You want to ask what is not what is the salary? What is the compensation range? Okay. Number three, personal information unrelated to the job. Okay. Nowadays, um, there's a lot of, you know, people have different beliefs, different views on politics, on religion, on policy, on, on, on just a lot of different things. And so you, you want to leave that at the door, guys. You know, business is for business. Your job is for business. You can definitely make friends, but you don't want to be sharing that in the interview on like what your personal beliefs and you're going to be just, just engaging everybody on that. Okay. That's not what attracts employers. So be aware of that. Leave it at the door. Um, and by the way, the recruiter should never ask you stuff like that. That is not okay if the recruiter asks you anything about like your, your, your spiritual or race or, you know, gender, anything like that. So, you know, it, it, but it's a two-way street. So don't ever kind of bring these things up. Focus on the role and the responsibilities and what value you're bringing to the role and how you can make the company better, okay? Number four, disinterest or lack of preparation. Big one. There's a lot of people that you can feel when they get on the interview that we're not their first choice or they're, it's not the first choice. Maybe they're the backup choice. That's okay. It, it happens. Like, you know, I get it. You're playing the numbers. But you don't want to openly kind of like showcase it. You don't want to be there and you're like, you're just, you can feel that the candidate is just not enjoying the experience at all. Um, right? Or they're super negative. I, I don't want to hire anybody like that. You know, I, I understand you don't, you don't have to be jumping off the grounds positive. But you can't be bringing everybody down because if I introduce you to that in the work environment, if you bring everybody down, it's not really good for the environment. So you want to make sure that you show active interest or at least open mindedness going into an interview. Maybe it's not your first choice, but I'm still very eager to learn about the company. Number second thing is lack of preparation, uh, especially for salespeople. If I'm hiring salespeople, I expect them to be prepared. OK, I expect them to have some kind of level of preparation. 90% of the candidates I talk to, which is maybe not that many, but 80%, 80% of the candidates I talk to, like if I ask them what do they know about the company, it's like blank. Oh, I don't even know. What company is this? <laughs> and that's like a really big red flag to me. If you're a good candidate as well as just a good salesperson, you did some level of preparation. Doesn't mean you have to make like a huge like article, essay, report. It means like doing a little bit of research before the call or ideally like, an, you know, a little bit before that. But you, you know a little bit about the company, the history. How big is the company? Where's the company going? Where's it based out of? Right. What are the services and products they provide? What makes them, you know, different? And you want to make sure that you have maybe like three bullet points in your head um, or written down that you can utilize if a recruiter or somebody asks you, then you're like, hey, yeah, I, here's some things that I like about the company. That shows me that you prepared. Having just an answer separates yourself from everybody else, okay? Number five, overconfidence or arrogance, you could say. Um, this happens a lot with senior executives uh, a lot of the time where, you know, they, they come in, want, you know, they want that, like, I want respect. I want, I have this, I, I, you know, all that stuff. There's a fine line. To me, 
this is my personal opinion. It's a little bit more opinionated. But the people I know that run great companies, right, as well as like great executives, they come in with a level of confidence. They are very confident in getting the job done. They can get the job done. They know what needs to be done. They know also what needs to be is the expectations and what value they can bring. But there's still a level of teachability and coachability and willingness to like, you know, I don't know it all. I don't know what I don't know. You know, so there's a balance there that you want to try to enact. And I think bring into any role that you do. So overconfidence can sometimes be a downfall because it's like, if you're super overconfident, then maybe you're not going to listen to other team members. Maybe you're not going to listen to the CEO, right? And so you want to have some level of humility and teachability. Okay. Number six, final, dishonesty. Don't be dishonest. Honest is, honesty is the best policy. Um, lying or exaggerating about your skills or experiences can damage your credibility, basically. Um, it can really harm your chances of getting hired. Um, it's, it's really bad. You know, we, people, recruiters do reference checks, guys. They're going to test you also on the job. And trust me, if you total, like, I understand, like you can, you want to make sure that be honest about it. Um, if you're trying to get a job, right. You want to try to win them. And it's like, I have no experience in this thing. Try to get experience, try to look up on YouTube on the tools that people use. Show that you have researched the tools, you've researched the role, you've done training in some way or form. You are also super enthusiastic and you're willing to work hard and you're willing to be, you know, learn everything and learn from the people above you. That shows like me a lot more. I'm way willing to hire somebody like that than somebody who is overconfident or even just experienced, but doesn't have the same drive. So with just make sure that if you don't, guys. It's going to come back to bite you and worse off, it's going to ruin your reputation in that industry if you are dishonest about something and they hire you, they find out you can't do the job and then they, you're basically fired, you're going to be fired anyway and then you're back to square one. So make sure you're being honest about everything on your resume um, and then anything that's gaps in it, you know, work on those skill sets, work on those uh, methods or tools that are needed to get the job done. Anyway, so those, that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. If you're looking for a resume review, if you're looking for, you know, I've been helping a lot of students right now. It wasn't my intention to like have this be like a little bit like that kind of stuff, but more and more people have been reaching out to do mock interviews, to rewrite resumes. I'm happy to do so. Feel free to contact me and we can work out kind of the details. Um, I'll leave my information in the description below. I'm also possibly, possibly coming out with a new course on how to master the interview. I might do one on mastering the interview. I might do one on basically kind of sales structure on how to do achieving in tech sales. Um, a few students have reached out asking about this and I might just do it. And if you're one of the people that messaged me before I, you know, create it, you'll probably get it for free because I want to give back. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. If there's enough people that are interested, I might just create it out of, you know, why not? Um, so hit me up on that. Send me an email or text me and uh, hope you guys have a great weekend, okay? All right, cheers.